Good afternoon from our second installment of Courtyard DTs. DTs stand for daily texts from the Moravian um, Church. And we're at St. Luke, the St. Luke Courtyard. And it's a beautiful spring day here in Albuquerque, uh, New Mexico. Well, reflection on today's daily text. And the first text is from Psalm 145. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. Uh, and the second one, the New Testament one, is from Colossians, the first chapter, um, verse 9. And it reads, We have not ceased to be praying for you and asking that you may be filled with knowledge of God's will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding. It's a really, really beautiful text. Um, a week ago in the Wall Street Journal, there came, um, there appeared a beautiful article um, on a, in the Sunday newspaper um, entitled, When Epidemics Wreak Havoc in America. Um, and it was by a New York University professor by the name of David Oshinsky. And I really found it fascinating. Um, honestly, it provides a larger context for what we are facing today. The challenges that we face today. And the author Oshinsky says that the impact of diseases on American history has not really been studied all that much. And he just has just written a book about that. Um, not at all to minimalize the coronavirus that we're facing today, but our country has had to face, according to Oshinsky, a, a number of infectious outbreaks of disease. And um, these outbreaks have been very, 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 very common. Um, and he writes this, so deadly that Americans, these diseases, outbreaks have been so deadly that Americans have had little choice but to accept the toll they exacted with stoicism and dread. Death by epidemic remained a natural depressing part of American life until just a few generations ago. Jeez. And there were a lots of these infectious diseases. Smallpox, smallpox outbreaks took a devastating toll on, on Native Americans. Cholera epidemics, there was the yellow fever that was brought about by the mosquitoes, supposedly from Africa on slave ships. Scarlet fever, typhus, diphtheria, um, measles, um, and then in a few years, or the years before 1955, polio was one of the dreaded diseases until a vaccine was found by, Don, by Dr. Jonathan Salks called the polio, the Salks vaccine. Um, I remember taking the polio vaccine when I was a little kid. And the author says that the development of such vaccines have increased our life expectancy and driven a decline in infectious diseases, and that's really, really good news. Rah, rah, science. But then the psalmist proclaims this today. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all of his doing, doings. Just and kind. Um, do you believe that? You have some questions with regard to that. And I don't know where pandemics viruses, bad viruses add up, and <clears throat> add up theologically on the grand scheme of things. I do know that there is a grand, great randomness uh, to life. I do know that when Jesus was asked about theodicy, the relationship between a good God and evil, I imagine Jesus kind of shrugging his shoulders and saying, God makes the sun shine on the good and the bad, and he also makes the rain to fall on the just and unjust. Hmm. Kind of scary. I have hope, though, me personally, that there is a deeper narrative beneath the surface narrative of life that we receive, that we experience each day, and that there is the goodness and kindness of God beneath it all. That's what I've learned to trust in but I also continue to struggle with, also. Um, I really like Eugene Peterson's message version um, of 
Colossians, the first chapter. Our text for today was verse 9, but I like verses 9 through 12, and I will read it to you. Be assured that from the first day we heard of you, we haven't stopped praying for you, asking God to give you wise minds and spirits attuned to his will, and so acquire, acquire a thorough knowledge and understanding of the ways in which God works. We pray that you will live well for the Master, making him proud of you as you work hard in his orchard. As you learn more and more how God works, you will learn how to do your work. We pray that you'll have the strength to stick it out over the long haul, not the grim strength of gritting your teeth, but the glory strength that God gives you. It's a strength that endures um, the unendurable and spills over into joy, thanking the Father who makes us strong enough to take part in everything bright and beautiful that he has for us. That's beautiful. It's a beautiful paraphrase. And that's our prayer for you today, that you will receive such strength that will spill out into joy and that we together will gradually learn the ways of God in our life. And so we say amen to that and may God be with you this day.